What's up everybody? Today we are talking about the science of car care. I'm JC, please bear with me. Some of this is gonna be a little bit in depth with the science, but I promise there's a payoff on informing you how you can best take care of your car in the winter months. We're dealing with snow, we're dealing with sleet, we're dealing with freezing rain, we're dealing with salted brined roads, and that can lead to corrosion on your car. We're talking about that today. Stick around. So we're gonna start with corrosion, this high level term, and get it down to how it impacts your car. So in general, corrosion is just kind of a general degradation of materials. We think of metals, but not always metals, but general degradation of materials over time, usually with some kind of interaction with oxygen that's degrading to a more thermodynamically stable material. So typically, basically when we're talking about this, Rust is more stable than pure iron, but pause that for now. So high level corrosion. So the next more specific term we're talking about here is oxidation. I hope you can read that. And specifically here, we're talking about electrochemical oxidation. And that is basically when there's a specific reaction with metal typically reacting, reacting with oxygen. Not always, but mostly that's what we're talking about. So corrosion, multiple materials, oxidation, electrochemical oxidation. We're talking about metals. Now we're talking about things in your car. And then another layer more specific, why this matters for us, everybody knows this term, is rust and rusting. And that is specifically with iron materials. So again, general, more specific. So why this matters to you and why this matters to everybody this time of year especially is this is the enemy, this is the cancer of cars. This is what destroys your car. And rusting isn't just that kind of orangey red turning of metal, it's actually physically deteriorating physical properties of metal. So it's less, less rigid, less flexible in some things you wanna be flexible and loses that strength and integrity. So this is a very detrimental thing to your automobile. So I wonder there's some science content here. I'm about to flip this board over and you might see some scary stuff that gives you flashbacks to high school. Please stay with me. I promise it's got real applications to your car. So we're gonna flip this thing. Okay, thank you for the editing magic. What you're seeing here, again, we're not gonna get into the science-y details, but I wanna show you why this matters with how corrosion, how rust happens on your vehicle. Um, so very high level, we're talking here about the reduction of oxygen and the oxidation of iron. If you remember back to your high school chemistry class, you had the redox reaction or the oil rig, you know, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, and we're talking about electrons. So oxygen is primarily what is going to break down your vehicle at the irons level, okay? So oxygen is gonna take electrons. That electron source is your vehicle, is your iron, is your steel panels. Mixes with water and gives out these hydroxide ions. Again, you don't have to worry about that. The actual oxidation of iron, so the thing that's losing electrons, your car, like I said, iron is going to break down into a different more stable form, thermodynamically stable form of iron, and it's gonna give those electrons away. So when you think about this, here's your panel. Here's your, your uh, rear quarter panel where everybody sees some rust after years and 100,000 miles. You got the steel panel. That, that is a basically a metal matrix that has floating um, electrons going around there. A point that where the oxidation happens acts as the local anode. So we've talked in our previous videos about um, kind of polar molecules and um, the battery effect. When I said electrochemical oxidation, this is why this is actually like a battery. So this little spot here, I have a little negative sign if you can see that, acts as a local anode. The iron is oxidized here and gives up electrons. At some other point in your surface, those electrons will float around, move all across the surface, and typically where there is a hydrogen ion, and this is gonna get more important when we talk about acids and things like that, where there's a hydrogen ion or a local area of positive charge, there's a positive charge here, that's going to act as your cathode or the positive terminal of the electrochemical battery per se. That is where 
the electron is then given up to oxygen. That's where the reduction of oxygen happens. So again, oxidation is lost, we lose electrons here. Reduction is gain, oxygen gains electrons here. Why is this important? Very, you don't need to know all this, but this is why it's important. Similar to the fire triangle, if you Smokey the Bear learned that you need fuel, oxygen, heat. Rust is the same way for three different things. You need water, you need electrons or iron, you need iron, you need the water, and you need oxygen. If you have all three of those, corrosion, rusting will happen. If you don't have all three, it will not happen. And that's important because you can control how your car gets deteriorated during the certain times of year and over the lifetime your vehicle would take care of it. So to visualize this, we're gonna let Jared explain with this demo he set up. So we're gonna talk about corrosion and we have a little demo to show kind of how different solutions corrode. Uh, specifically, this is a steel plate. So what we did is take a steel plate, polish it, and then we put it in these five different kind of jars or solutions. So I'll start taking it out. So this first one is gonna be a salt solution. So this is basically what happens if you're near you know, the ocean or you're near, you know, when it's icy out and there's salt on the road, you can see it starts corroding in the salt solution. So for this, it's a mixture of just sodium chloride and the salt actually helps speed up the oxidation reaction, which is what causes this, you know, the rusting and the corrosion for the salt solution. So that's gonna be pretty, happen faster when it's, there's a salt solution than if there's just water. Uh, for alkaline, so you can actually see that this, this plate doesn't really show much corrosion because the alkaline already has uh, some basically oxidation or it'll form a mild, mild oxide layer, so then it will stop actually corroding anymore. So you can see this plate doesn't really have much rust or anything on it. Next we have acidic, so in this case, you can see where the acid's actually touching the steel plate, the plate's actually nice and clean. And it's where the air is interacting with the iron that you actually get all this rust and oxidation, which is different than the salt solution where it's gonna actually rust and oxidize where the liquid is. So there's different mechanisms for kind of this corrosion, as you can see. And then these last two are just to show that you really need a, a combination of water, air, and the, the metal. So in this solution, we actually put a thin layer of oil on top of water. And you can see, because there's no uh, oxygen in the water, it doesn't actually corrode at all. And the same here with, if you have just air and no, no water, you again get no corrosion because there's no uh, there's no electrolyte for the reaction to happen in. So just to clarify how that applies here, we saw in that demo that only the jars that contained all three, oxygen, iron, and water, corrode. The ones that only have two or one, there's no corrosion. So we can use that to control degradation on our vehicles. So let's talk about how your car care regimen, especially during the winter, can help protect from this whole mess. So when we uh, kind of end our videos and say thanks for washing, that's your number one maintenance thing you can do. When you think about dirt and then especially salts and our electrolytes on your vehicle uh, exhibit A, that, not, that does two things. It keeps this electrolyte battery going on. And a quick short you can find if you go into the shorts, I think it's from Physics is Fun, they will show you how you put a battery through a tank of deionized water, so water that has all these ions taken out, connected to a light bulb, Electri electricity that does actually not pass through deionized water. But as soon as you put a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of an electrolyte, that thing lights up. And that's, that's this, this phenomenon here. We're helping the electrons move through that surface. So again, this car panel, covered in dirt and salt, so any exposed iron, that has this triangle going on is gonna get ramped up on corrosion. The second part of a dirty panel re relates to this water molecule in this reaction. And you've seen in our videos before when we have 
hydrophobic surfaces that get contaminated with dirt, how they don't shed water the same way. So when you have that dirt on a panel, and even worse on like the undercarriage, when you, can you imagine this dirt? When water gets on that, it is more likely to sit on that place for a longer period of time. So you saw with the samples in these jars, if there's no water around, there's no oxidation happening. You need that water sitting there, concentrated to really keep that going. So when you clean that surface, not only are you removing the electrolytes that helps act like a battery, you're also removing dirt, which helps minimize how much water is sitting on that circuit for that period of time. So keep your car clean. The next thing we can talk about with maintenance is your acid and base washes to help with this corrosion issue. So again, back to the jars, what was interesting about the acid solution is the degradation wasn't actually happening where the acid was saturated. So when that piece of metal was submerged, the acid part was actually cleaned from the acid. So what we can take away from that is if you're doing a wash, so if I take this into the garage and want to do a wash on it, an acid wash or an acid pre-soak would actually be a great way of getting these inorganics off, cleaning some of the oxidation that has happened, but then what you wanna do, because what we learned with this acid situation, and you can see from the top of that metal coupon that the acid does pull those electrons from the other, the top part of that coupon and starts rusting. You wanna neutralize and get our pH in this range, if at all possible. So really the best thing you can do, especially when you're thinking about you know, undercarriage washes, get an acid wash, neutralize it with a high pH, all-purpose cleaner, high pH wash. That's going to basically starve the reaction of these free electrons and the free hydrogens. It's gonna starve that and stop it and get it in the safe zone. And then the other thing, the other benefit is it neutralizes the acid, doesn't go down the drain, doesn't get on you, doesn't sit around on any of your spots. And then finally do a neutral wash to make sure there's no you know, high pH things sitting around. But that really can help you with this knowledge, freeze and stop that reaction from happening. The final thing we're gonna talk about to help with this oxidation and rusting issue is our kind of barrier methods. We talked earlier about iron. You don't wanna remove that. That's actually obviously integral to your car, but you can seal it off from the water and the oxygen. And that's primarily done with, with automotive industry with paints. And paints have actually gotten very high quality, very good at staying on your car for long periods of time. But there are things you can do to keep it that way. So you talk about you know waxing and sealing. Uh, more lately, it's all about ceramic products that have that long-term durability. Other areas of your car, however, there's very high quality uh, undercoatings for the underside of your car. That obviously also is a barrier protecting all that metal on the underside of your car from the elements that's gonna help with corrosion. Uh, talking about wheel wells, there's undercoating for that as well. Again, that's just making a physical barrier between your metal and the elements that are helping that, that reaction go off. So there's a lot to digest there. We really need some of your feedback to if this is the kind of content you'd like to see, if there's interest here. Again, you don't need to know or understand how these equations work, but I think there's a benefit of understanding that to give you some knowledge on how you can best protect your car, especially in these winter months. So if you like it, please let us know with a comment, hit that like button, let Skylar know, he's gonna get right back at you. We appreciate it, thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one.